Hammer Smash, 103.7 FM CFBU. This is Hammer Smash, Joey. And it's Metal Mike. How's it going today, Joe? It's going pretty good, Metal Mike. Fired up. Did some dad work. Yes. <laughs> Working on some lumber before Un- we started the show. Unbuilt a deck. Unbuilt a deck, yeah. <laughs> pretty dad of us. And hey, we got some, some guests in the studio right now. We're not going to wait. We're not going to wait until our first song. Let's fire him up right now. Cannibal Cam and Metal Dan in the studio. Hey, what's going on, What's guys? up, hey, fellas? How are you? <laughs> what's going on tonight? Hey, you know, back. you know, we're hanging out here playing some metal. Thanks for coming in, guys. Really appreciate Thank that. Thank you for inviting us back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we loved having you guys on. We had a lot of, lot of fun last time you guys came in. And we're going to have more fun. Yeah, we're going to have lots of more fun. And we're going to learn things, too. We, uh, we talked a lot about uh, metal <laughs> last week when you guys were here. Metal, what's that? I don't know. I'm not too sure. But we're going to find out. <laughs> we're going to oh, play something. about metal here? Well, like, like, like Limp Bizkit and P.O.D.? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah like... <laughs> corn. True metal. Corn, 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 corn flakes. Of, of, of N Sevenfold, all that stuff. <laughs> oh, the boy. heavy stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't Limp Bizkit playing this weekend, too? No, I think Heavy yeah. Montreal. Yeah, they're they taking are. over. Totally. You know what, though? Yep. Oh, because he's sick, right? The singer is sick, right? Is he? Of, a, of N Sevenfold. He, he turned. Oh, is he? Oh. Yeah, yeah. So now, he's cocky anyways, who cares? But you know what? <laughs> I don't even think that's a loss because I'm not a big fan of either bands. Nope. But I think I'd rather see Limp Biscuit than Avenged Sevenfold. I'll say it. I like the first Limp Biscuit album. Was that the... Uh, $3 bill, y'all. Oh, not the hot dog flavored water. Oh, and the, God, the chocolate stuff. <laughs> come on, man. You know, I, I, know, like, I only know the Undertaker theme song. Well, like, nothing against... Like, I mean, obviously, lots against new Metal and stuff like that. But, <laughs> but when it first came out, though... When it first came out, man, I liked the first Corn album. I liked the first Biscuit album. It was different. It was different, right? right. It was fresh. It, it, it kind of revived everything and then we found that you know new metal was the popular you know genre of, yeah then a year later it just totally got stale because everybody so much everybody's of it doing up it like mushrooms yeah. with all these mm-hmm. new metal ba- new metal bands everywhere and and then that pissed all the old school guys off which got them going hard again and got good bands going again yeah, it basically which, did to metal what glam did to metal i assume in like the 80s just uh, pissed everyone off grunge, so that, grunge did the glam oh. grunge grunge oh. killed glam Totally did because it was it was already it was already a dying genre anyways we found right late like 90, 91, people were just like you no know, it was around ninety two ninety three that's when it's it really, really died it yeah. died totally died and then as oh. soon as as soon as Nirvana and Soundgard and everything came out yeah everybody jumped ship on metal and everything and just went grunge yeah but we always remained of but we stayed uh, death metal. Metal. <laughs> I was talking to a, a buddy or not a buddy just some guy I guess about a Pantera show that he went okay. to and he was telling me about uh, 93 or something like that and Phil made this huge speech about how Metallica after they just came out the Black Album he's like thank you for them for releasing that garbage metal album now putting us number one in the spot of metal or right. something like that understandable though because I mean yeah, because yeah. Far Beyond Driven came out in 94 and that went number one on Billboard it's right, right yeah and that was a heavy album man Two years. Yeah, well, one of the, yeah, probably the heaviest album so to make number it, one on Billboard. Totally. Chart. So yeah, as soon as Metallica released the Black, yeah. then it just Pantera's like, oh, great, thanks. Right. Now we'll just, we, yeah, we'll just do it heavier now. Yeah, we'll just step right in and go heavier. <laughs> but you ended up going to see them at uh, that that year or two, didn't? Wasn't it? Uh, no, a couple a uh, couple years after that. Pantera or yeah. Metallica? Pantera. Pantera. Okay. Yeah. It was with Morbid Angel at Cops? Was that? Oh, the that one? was two thousand. Oh, okay. That was two thousand and one. Morbid Angel. That would have been Steve Tucker era. Uh, yeah. yeah, but someone else was filling in. I think uh, one of the guys from uh, one of the former members of Vital Remains. Oh, oh right. Yeah, sweet. So it was, yeah, I remember yeah. that show. It was uh, Morbid Angel, then it was Static X, some cheese ass new metal yeah. band uh, <laughs> Scrape, and then, yeah, oh, then it was Slayer and Pantera. Right. One of those. And, <laughs> and meanwhile, and during the 90s when all the grunge and new metal was coming out, death metal was still. Always there, but yeah, it was, but never it was, left. But it, but it was way back in the in the, in the behind the scenes. Yeah, man. but all, all, you know what? True metal Stays never up. dies. Yeah, yeah it was, no, but regardless, what happens? Yeah. It just, it's just it just metal just went more underground where it belongs. Kind of just did. always so hiding behind the curtain, and like doesn't matter. From what I find, like every decade and different like genre that comes by, it's like things come and go. But like metal and death metal, just kind of always just been there. It's yeah. always there, and it, it always remains. Sure, you get no matter po- what. Sure, you get the posers that jump ship well, all the time and try to do the other genres and everything like that. But then you have the trues in the background that you just, you know, everybody's still not the, the trues. <laughs> no, <laughs> not, yeah. the trues. not that man. No, yeah. no, yeah. The true yeah. diehard. Yeah. The trues. What yeah. are you doing here? 
We're gonna be yeah. we're gonna be playing lots of true metal on this show. Yeah. Like Limp Bizkit POD. Yeah, like Limp Bizkit POD. That's coming on. It's a spy shank. It's going underground. <laughs> we're gonna play a lot. Well, we got lots of music. I, I see a lot more things to see actually mm. in front of me. Lots of CDs. You got. I know last week, guys. Uh, you know, give us a little bit of a hard time with not the with no the lack of CDs. So I made up for it with this giant pile. Brought in some metal yeah. CDs. Well, it's just nice to we'll have rock physical, that. right? I no, mean, it's true. I totally agree with that. Well, like even what you said. I remember what you said to me uh, last week about like if you really like the label and they're the music they're putting out, support that label and go to get a bunch of CDs. And right over here, I got a. You know, a whole bunch of Hell's Headbangers that I went and yeah, bought out because I love that record. Great label from Ohio, man. Yeah. Was- yeah. Awesome. Baby. Troy, a lot of great bands coming out of Troy from that label. So, uh, yeah. yeah, you're going to hear lots from Hell's Headbangers oh, from boy. me, as well as some Metal Mike tunes, oh. Metal Dan tunes, and Cannibal Cam tunes. Yeah, man. We brought all yeah. kinds of stuff. I got some lot of Canadian. Tonight. We got uh, what uh, uh, this one band here that some people think is one of the one of the first, I wouldn't say the first, but pretty much one of the purveyors of the death metal sound from 85. 85? Yeah, wow. Savage Death. Uh, yeah, we just brought all, we got, we got stuff. We got stuff. <laughs> so let's play some music and talk more about Limp Bizkit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good idea. Nice. Good stuff. <laughs> when uh, does Limp Bizkit make an appearance in uh, your big project you're working on? Oh yeah, they're like they're like a headlining <laughs> band in the death metal documentary, man. You have to, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. When you went up to Banger, that's all you guys talked about oh, was dude, Limp Bizkit. You guys just, just yeah. stuck on that one. You wore your favorite Fred Durst T-shirt and red hat. <laughs> oh God, backwards. Yeah, just like I am now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think? So we uh, so we announced why we're playing our the first song that we're playing. Yeah, let's get it. Let's get it over with. Let's start this song right away while we're playing it. Uh, Metal Mike and I were gonna go see Sleep tomorrow, mm-hmm. and we've been really excited to see this show because when we first saw Sleep, it was just like just a random show that they did what a couple years ago. Yeah, uh, and it was my first really Stoner Doom show. Have you guys ever been to a Stoner Doom show? Like a real Stoner Doom show? Yeah. <sighs> what high on fire? Yeah. Yeah, high yeah, on fire. That's pretty much and- sleep. Yeah. Well, Just can't think of anything off the top of my head but, right now. But but, yeah. but but when we seen High on Fire, they played St. Catharines. Oh, cool! And that was when that first album dropped, the Ten Thousand. Oh, oh, um, uh, no, the, the art, the, the art, art of self defense. Mm-hmm. That's it. And yeah, that was two thousand, and they were on tour with Voivod. Yeah, they played so, here oh, in St. Catharines. So they yeah. played at the Hideaway over at Grantham and whatever street that is over there in that plaza, and uh, we didn't even know who they were because on the flyer, which was actually a CFBU sponsored show at the time, oh, uh, someone made a mistake. It, it said the the band name was Hell on Fire. So I thought it was just some cheesy <laughs> cheesy ass local band, you know, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Totally. you know, one of those. But it, later on, we found out, hey, it's uh, Matt Pike from Sleep, his new band. Oh, yeah. cool! I was like, whoa! And then well, we were just blown away. I just bought the CD right after their set. I was like, right on. Well, because we look over and it's a bunch of bell-bottom, long-haired dudes with venom and Celtic frost shirts, and like <laughs> we're just like, okay, these guys look familiar. Like, what's going on here, right? Yeah. And then Dan's like, dude, I think that's Mad Pike. <laughs> like, holy crap, right? So pretty much that was like sleep. Like that's sleep. Just that album was yeah. probably like you could tell on that album there's like some sleep riffs left yeah, over, mm-hmm. left over riffs. For sure, they've got sleep. a lot more thrash and oh, big sped Way things more. up yeah. a lot. Well, you can even hear in the new Sleep album, the new The Sciences, you can hear a lot of those really thrash and heavy riffs that he uh, he yeah. brings to the table. Uh, you can only drone for so long, I think. Yeah. 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 I mean, I get it, but come on, man. It's true. <laughs> We're not all on mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> well, for this next song, you don't need mushrooms. All you need is a bong because uh, oh, it starts boy. out with Al doing a nice toke with Marijuana Knots theme on Hammer Smash 103.7 FM CFBU. Here's Sleep. You're listening to Hammer Smash, 103.7 FM, CFBU. Hey, Hammer Smash, Joey over here. Mm, Metal Mike. (laughs) Cannibal Cam and Metal Dan over here in the studio join us. Talking about some death metal and black metal and everything doom and all that fun stuff. Trash, trash metal. (laughs) (laughs) Trash metal. Uh, Yeah, we're going to play some more tunes going on over here. And uh, what we were just talking about behind the break was the type of black metal that I love which is uh, that black thrash that black and roll type of stuff and I was saying earlier like one of the the record labels that I love the most that puts out that most is Hell's Headbangers and uh, great label yeah, yeah. Like, I'll, throw, I'll throw on something by uh, them oh, so many options Jim Conya yes, yes from uh, Nunslaughter Nunslaughter yeah, yeah. Nunslaughter 
He was awesome, man. He came to every show within the like a three, four hour radius all the time, man. He was wow. at everything. And I've seen some videos of him, and he's so like he just fires up the crowd because oh, he's the one that talks. Don doesn't there, talk yeah, really. He, really talk, no. yeah, he Jim just fires everybody up. Have you guys ever seen a show yeah, with man, Jim? I saw him in Buffalo back in 2000, 2010, 2011, somewhere. At a place in Buffalo called the Funeral Home, which was an Whoa. old funeral home. Literally, yes, that's it was awesome. funny when we were crossing the border. Who's guys going? To, what are you guys doing? Uh, we're going to go see a band, Nunslaughter. Okay, where where are they playing? The Funeral Home. I was like, Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't Buffalo. make this up. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we got the tickets right here. So I was like, okay, go ahead. Oh, Luckily, he was cool. What so, a yeah. wicked show, though, man. That was my oh. fr- that's my first time seeing Nunslaughter, and yeah. yours too. Yeah, yeah. And Jim, man, like just like. The, the nicest dudes in the world, man. Yeah, like, we were, we were just uh, we we just headed off right away after the show. Uh, no, before and after yeah. the show, we we're just shooting the shooting the poop, and then uh, <laughs> yeah, we just exchanged addresses. And then he said, "I've received like big packages in the mail from Jim. Just send me packages like packed with so so much stuff, like set CDs, vinyl." I'm like, "Wow, you didn't yeah. have to do this." That's buddy. awesome, like, thanks, man. So wow. I sent them one, you know, we yeah. traded packages. And, and he yeah. always came around, like, just handing out samplers and CDs and records yeah. and just, like, just being a great dude for and the yeah. label itself. Like, man. How Every time you... I bump into the guy, he'd be, like, giving me some stuff. There you, like, yeah. you go. Oh, there thanks, you go. buddy. You don't have to, but thanks, yeah. man. Well, that's <laughs> promoting at the end of the day, too, right? Yeah, it's like, exactly. Yeah, true. it's true. Well, I mean, especially a record label with distribution. I mean, you have a lot of material yeah. that you're dealing with, right? So, I mean, what are you going to do with it? Just sit on it all the time? Just oh, exactly. give it away. Give it away. Give it away, right? Yeah. And the last time we actually seen him was at the Bolt, thr- bolt Thrower show. Yeah, nice. Ra- Razor and Bolt Thrower, yeah, a cu- couple years back. And again, he's handing out Schnauzer CDs and uh, <laughs> a couple Soulless albums and all this other yeah. stuff. And again, just hanging out and being an awesome dude. And then, yeah, that's the last time I saw him. And then the news came out and that was it, man. So. Yeah, it's uh, Nunslaughter took a little bit of a hiatus from that. But I think of they're course, starting yeah. to go back in it yeah. now. Yeah, they're they starting to play a little bit more. Shows. Oh, they, shows they and, just they uh, just played that ear slaughter in uh, Montreal there last yes. month and a half. Ago oh, nice! Ago. So uh, yeah, they're they're still going, but and I don't know anything about a new album, but I'm but sure the, there's something. The last like album, Angelic Dread. I actually one time I met Don. And uh, they saw my Balfour shirt, and that sparked up the conversation. And we were just talking about metal, and he gave me. He just happened to have Angelic Dread on him. He gave it to me, and became a fan well, of Nun Slaughter ever since. That's what those yeah, he just had do, it. Man. Happened to have it on him. There you go, man. Go yeah. listen to it. Right Super on. cool. I lo- and I guess that's what really turned me on to Hell's Headbangers because I just wanted to know more about Nun Slaughter and more about this music that I love. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they deliver. They Great totally stuff. Do. And the releases are all all good. Everything yeah, you put out. All quality material. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That's why I bought like 10, 15 CDs from that, <laughs> that not label. Just, ju- not just stuff from their label, but they got a great distribution center over there. Yeah. So it's like they got all kinds of stuff, all kinds of metal. Like they do, yeah. I bought a bunch of patches from that sti- from them too yeah. as well. Yeah. They got a lot of cool stuff over there. Just metal, great it's metal distribution. They always have these deals pages and yep. stuff like buy 10 CDs for 20 bucks, that kind of thing, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So Hell's Headbangers, go check it out. Please. Yeah, yeah, go, go check out that, that site. Label. They got a lot of great merchandise yeah, there man. on that label. All right then, let's get uh, let's band. get something from Hell's Headbangers on there. Uh, one of the bands that I really dug is a band called Power from Hell. They've got that uh, real thrash black and roll. Or yeah, like that, somewhere or from or near Chile Brazil. Or yeah, know, somewhere Southern America. I know yeah. that for sure. And uh, yeah, no, I love this stuff. So I'm gonna start out with a tune called Old Metal. A lot of cool riffs going on in here. So here's Power from Hell with their album Devil's Whorehouse on yes. Hammer Smash 103.7 FM. Oh yeah, coming out of Montreal, there's a band called Disc Crust, and uh, the song right there is just called One. There's one. Every song on that record is just named. Oh yeah, that's there. the one of the. This, <laughs> with, they're all Roman numerals. Yeah, one, two, three, four, two. five, six. Yeah, dude, I dug that. Had some like black doom sludge almost going on there. Yeah, crust. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah. yeah, I guess so. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. That was a nice long song, eh? Yeah, two yeah, long yeah. songs in a row. Because uh, right before that, we had some Candle Mass, which I felt fitting, because you know. Basically, this candle m- mass rules. Well, yeah, candle yeah. mass off. is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you know, we don't know how long we're going to be in this particular room, and candle mass has been like a thread through our show since the beginning. Yes, that's yeah. true. I think it's fitting to play them here. Yeah, I yeah. think so. so yeah, yeah. Have to talk about what's going on. 
Somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> so don't. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Don't, really. so don't. Yeah. 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 We'll keep right. it. We'll keep it on the DL. Only, only we know. It's, mind, I brought nothing up. it's a secret. <laughs> only we know. But. I love old candle mass. You're a big candle mass. Yeah. I love old candle mass. The yeah. very 80, first 80s candle mass. Ep- Epicus Dumicus Metaclis. Yeah. Right. Love that album. Oh, yeah. Great album. I got a back patch of that. And then the second one, Nightfall. Yep. Then Ancient Dreams. I love yeah. Messiahs. Yeah. On vocals. Oh, my God. He's, you know what? <laughs> I remember back in the day, back in the 80s, some people were like, I like the music, but I don't like the vocals. Yeah, I can't handle the totally. operatic vocals from Messiah Mark Holland. Yeah. And, but I, I liked it. I thought it fit the their style of classic epic yep. metal perfectly. The first that. album isn't Messiah, though. It's, it, I forget yeah, the guy's a, yeah, name, but the, he, yeah, he tried out him. on the phone. Like, he just Whoa. called the guys up and sang through the phone. They're like, all right, sweet. Let's get this guy on the album. And they just put him on yeah. for that album. And uh, I love that voice too. Yeah, me yep. too. It's got that real operatic, almost droning voice too. At the same time, mm-hmm. well, I got into it. Their new, their new vocalist is uh, his name's what? Rob Lowe. Is that no? Rob Lowe is um, the album you just played. Yes, yes. Okay. De- Death, Magic, Doom. Rob Lowe is also in um, Solitude Eternus. Yes, which yes. We've oh yeah. Before. yeah, I remember those guys. Yeah, they're yeah. from Texas. Oh yeah, yeah, from yeah. the states. Yeah, yeah, and they uh, the vocalist for them is on that album that just played by Candlemass. But the newest vocalist. Some Swedish guy, but he's awesome. Oh, oh yeah, yeah it's killer good stuff. Yeah, yeah, we saw him when we saw him live at Heavy MTL. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that happened this weekend too. Yeah, didn't it was it? this weekend. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Any bands that you would see on the you know what, on I there? Pay attention to actually uh, just, anybody. Yeah, just mm-hmm. uh, just Voivod. I wanted to go see and uh, a couple other bands. Emperor's and, the big one, I oh, guess. Emperor. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Like I'd love to see Emperor for it was sure. Emperor and Sleep. I think they played like back to back. Yeah, Sleep played. You made a good point, Mike. You said Ooh. that Sleep was playing at four thirty or something. He's like, why wouldn't they just put it at 420? <laughs> right. Do they, any of them even smoke anymore in the band? Oh, yeah. Al does. Oh, no, Al yeah. Huge. And, well, the, the song we played, Marijuana Not, is a recording of him doing a bong toke. True. Yeah. True. Okay. All right. You got me there. It's yeah. not just Tony Iommi coughing again. No. <laughs> 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 he is coughing actually on that record. It's Whoa. a great record too. That All right, was, let's get some. Let's get some tunes by these guys. Sweet yeah, Sweet Leaf. Sweet Leaf? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Look at that. Yeah, that's just Tony. I think he just did a toke and got that's a it. thing of him coughing. And then they just uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the loop effect. That's yeah. It. Wicked. Imagine cool. if he tried to perform that live. How cheesy that would be. Be terrible. Yeah, be just <laughs> you just don't do it. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> not even with backing tracks. No, 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 no. Oh, just go right into that great. Yeah, great yeah. Riff. All right, guys, let's get some of your tunes on here. I uh, want to hear uh, what I really want to hear. Cam is what you brought in. Right. This band, Savage Death. You're saying like we're, they're one of the first death metal bands. Uh, the vocals. Well, I mean, it's, it's all up in the air, right? We got like we started talking about. We got Mantis. We got Necrophagia. We got yeah. Possessed with the you know actually. You know, Seven Churches was probably yeah. a pretty quintessential death metal album. Um, Hence, they had the song on that album called Death, death metal. metal. Yep. Right. And uh, for the documentary, also Jeff Becerra, the singer from there, he uh, he's totally want- wanting us to get down there so we can shoot him and everything like that. Oh, nice. For the doc. So uh, there's that. And then uh, yeah, Lonely in the Background. There's this band called uh, Savage Death. And One of those obscure demo bands, you know that. Never put out an album, just demo tapes, you know. Totally. There was a lot of bands like that yeah. that never got a actual full recognition. Yep. So, so. this one here uh, features Tom... Um, Tom Stevens. Tom Stevens from this band Nocturnal. and uh, They were on this label called uh, JL America back in the day, and... I don't know. That's that, that's when I found out about that band, and that was like 1990, 91, I think it was. Yeah, ninety one, ninety two. So I mean, yeah. obviously, it's like okay, they're already old school. But then you know, I started, I started, you know, doing a little, a uh, couple things with them, and he sent me that CD, and he's like, oh, this is my, this is my other, this is my other band before Nocturnal. I'm like, okay, well, that's pretty early then, and literally <laughs> it was eighty five. So in Savage Death and Nocturnal was like a like a death with some thrash elements, but death metal out, death metal band. And then you listen to this, and holy crap, man. It's like hearing Strapato for the first time or something, or Slaughter. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> holy crap. Wow. Like, it's heavier than what people would Where are, the, uh, are they from? Uh, I forget. Jersey? New Jersey? Yes. Or something like that? Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. Wow. Look, there you go. There's Danner backing me up. But yeah, Jersey. <laughs> totally. And uh, yeah, man, 85. So you got to figure, if they put out a demo in 85, how long have they been around before that? 
That's true, right? right. Yeah, yeah. And that's there's a whole bio in there too. That's true with like all the the early death metal bands you for sure. Just start with a demo, right? Don't yeah, around for at least a, you know a year or two before they start you know releasing anything. Well, it's like it, thing about like trying a, to like find a, their own sound, you know, before yeah. releasing anything. Yeah. Well, like a band like Exhumed, like they had tons of demos come Mass out before demos. before gore metal. Stuff. Yeah, tons so stuff. much stuff going on yeah. there. Yeah, bands don't do that. No. Not a lot these days, you know, by put, releasing a bunch of demo mm-hmm. tapes just, and just, stuff like just that. Small just small things once in a while. To right? find just their to, sound, just really. To, yeah, and just to keep going, right? How would you find something like that, though? Because that's like the mo- underground of the underground. Yeah. Well, that was that was again us being doing zines and tape trading with everybody. Yeah, <laughs> writing write letters to people. And, just, and like yeah, you said, just, man, just, man, just a network of like that. Everything you would before get internet, you'd get lists of tapes and be like, "Here's my tapes and CDs." What do you got? Here, I'll send him a list of what I have, and then he'll pick a bunch of stuff and you know mail back or take me this, 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 this. And I was like, okay, well, you got some death metal on there. I seen too. I've never checked that band out. That band out. He sends me a freaking mix of tapes or whatever like that. And then all of a sudden, it's like, who's exhumed? Who's yeah. fucking you know all these bands? Yeah. Sorry, um, all these bands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one like, down. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting excited here. Yeah, yeah. Now we're talking about this. But that's what you that's what that's what we did, right? And then yep. the pen pals was a big thing too in the Metal Maniacs uh, magazine back in the day too. And Metal Forces from Metal the UK, Forces, yeah. Yeah, also that one too. And there's just addresses, just pen pals. You yeah, sent boxes how, of it? How, like they would send boxes in the mail of the stuff. Everybody everybody, everybody sent everybody boxes, said, yeah, packages, packages everything. all kinds wow. of stuff. And it was cheaper sent in mail like twenty five years ago, thirty years ago too now, right? I mean sending a record then was like three dollars, two dollars. Now it's what, fifteen bucks kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. and then you gotta pay right. that extra fee for so, how heavy it is. So people aren't just sending stuff anymore because it's very costly, right? Mm-hmm. But back then it didn't matter, right? It's like man, I don't Plus want... you only have so much money to buy stuff anyway, so you gotta yeah. like just do trade. the tape. Trading trade, thing, right? Trade, mm-hmm. trade. So then, Exhumed crossed my path the one time, and like we was talking about the underground, underground, like that was, mm-hmm. you know, nobody knew about anything back then, right? Mm-hmm. So awesome. But uh, what were we just talking? Savage about? Death. Savage Death. Yeah, so yeah, 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 there's another uh, underground gem which didn't obviously yeah. circulate through myself or Dan at the time, but his later bands, Nocturnal, yes. So I guess we're gonna play some super old school stuff just to kind of show there was more than just death and you know. Obituary and nihilist yeah, and all the yeah, all, all, the, all, bands, the, yeah. all the, the bands right mm-hmm. carcass and Bef- stuff like yeah, that yeah but this is before let's let's go history history let's go even farther yeah and I I took a look on the inside of this and it says it's got a demo from eighty five eighty six and eighty five so well, let's do one from eighty five yes, do the please. earliest one I'm gonna play a tune uh, I guess their self self titled track Savage Death nice here it is on Hammer Smash one hundred three point seven FM. <laughs> Hey, look at these guys over here. Got their own mics. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. We had to take your mics away. <laughs> I gotta learn how to like talk into a different mic. Now. Yeah, look at us. We gotta share mics. Like, cheek to cheek. Mr. Come Kennedy. on, cheek to cheek. Little Come on. Yeah, we're, there. We're we, hey, hey, we've done man. it. You guys can do cheek. it too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just heard some savage, savage death in the song "Savage Death." Those vocals, eh? So much, Buddy, isn't that? They're yeah. just so savage. Death, rasp- pretty savage. Yeah, eh? yeah, they are savage. <laughs> I just mentioned earlier, yeah, that like the uh, I, I just can't get enough the obscure underground demo death metal just style demo. stuff. Yeah, it just so, so raw. Demo. Like you got. That solo, oh, that solo is so raw. It's sloppy Tom's, and everything, yeah. yeah. But Tom's, <laughs> but it's good, though, man. He literally is an amazing guitarist. Oh yeah, buddy. And Nocturnal, like even the even the new material. Holy cow, he shreds. What you need this? Oh, okay, there that. Go. But uh, yeah, man, listen to that. Eighty-five. So I would put that as a contender for you know early brutality for death metal. Oh yeah. Definitely, Definitely there. for sure. But really early evil, too. You can hear a lot of the venom in that and oh. The, oh, so much Celtic Frost, too. Yeah, man. Exactly. Well, everybody pretty much bait that. Yeah, that death metal sound. I'd say more of, venom. You, yeah, with the thrashy parts. Yeah. There. Yeah. Frost would have more like doom deaths. Yeah, but they did, stuff, though. But yeah. They, they yeah, had, they, yeah, a couple they had, parts. They had a breakdown in there and stuff. But yeah, it was more, it was more thrashier, though. It was more faster. But 85. Yeah, going it was good. 85. Wow. Sweet. Really? So, yeah. You gotta bring in the rarities, man. You got we gotta teach these people. No, I love it. I love it. Now, now I can check this out and is that but that's all that's all they have of That's all they had. Yeah. That's all they did then. So I have to go look out for those uh 
those the demos up on YouTube, yes. which is great. That's the one good thing about YouTube, eh? At least you can find oh, all those demos. Link to link They're to all link up to there. link. Yeah. So much. Like you, you you send me so many of these demos that I just I love and I get oh God, I get so stuck in so many demos. Yep. Won't be able to take Yeah, that, man, because people are going back to record them very primitive mm -hmm. again. Because that's the death metal sound, right? Yep. It, it is, works. It totally does. Yeah, man. Like, um, I got a playlist over here of stuff like Ritual Torment. You send me Grotesque Infection. Yeah. Um, guys. Uh, Immortal is. Fate. <laughs> uh, go, um, exhumed Gorgasm. <laughs> um, buried Beneath. Yeah, uh, raging, raging Deaths. Uh, compilation. And death metal. So much. Yeah, man. I love, I love I know. those demos. demos. The yeah. demo sound, man. There's, like, there's it's, so much about it. The people, like... People, don't people hear it. it right away, and they just think, ah, oh, it's bad production, I can't it's hear terrible. it, I can't hear it, it's terrible, no. but yeah. oh, it's so much more real. That's how it is. It feels like you're just real. hanging out with them and listening to them jam. It's exactly it. How good can they make a demo with the devices they got to work with, like, like four-track recorders or something back back in the day yeah, in the, nothing. the basement yeah, yeah. or something? Nothing. You know, like... Nobody had anything, reel-to-reel. Yeah, real to real recorders, right back in the, the back in the day. And if you I messed up, you just kept going. Yeah, like yeah. With, with this with the song. It doesn't matter. Yeah, no like, I mean, and, and I it mean, worked. And it yeah, worked. It totally does. Just a total punk rock attitude yeah. towards it, right? Like, like even Sabbath, you can hear so many little flubs in Tony solos, which is, but a, which is that's it's human. Th but that gives it character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what gives it that I don't real want, character like, sound. Like, like I get the process sound and being you know that yeah, way. I get getting everything perfect, tweaked out. Okay, yeah. Some bands, yeah. It sounds like 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 I'm watching a fake CGI movie <laughs> and you know what like it does what was the last time you actually heard like a mistake in an album that like you know that like, like well you, yeah you know they made the mistake but they just redid it right like of course the way they just cut it out pro tools right yeah, yeah exactly which they always do they can just use that one riff they did in the beginning and then just cut it through the whole song yeah, again that's too what I'm right do with the next slumber dust record i'm gonna make a mistake i'm just gonna leave it <laughs> <in there>. purposely <laughs> yeah. make seriously purpose. okay that's the easter Give it more the next recording you got to find your, your screw up on yeah. there right yeah. there you go <laughs> yeah good one that is good actually <laughs> Well, even with Slumber Dust, though, I can hear sometimes when you play in bass, like some notes, like it's not like a mistake, some notes will come out clearer than other notes, and I like that. How do you record it? Uh, live off the floor. Perfect. See? Yeah, exactly. That's the way it should be done. <laughs> it is, though. It's a jam. You want you want mm -hmm. people to hear it, your band as a jam, as a, as, a, as a unit, right? Well, exactly. That's what it is, right? Because if you go on stage and you sound absolutely nothing like, like the, the record... record people are walking out the door of course yeah, they feel ripped off yeah. and if you make it so tight and then you're not that tight live you set yourself up for failure already oh, big time that's oh, right huge yeah good point so good don't point. bother being a perfectionist yeah it, it, yeah <laughs> sometimes i mean it works sometimes i get it for things but when it comes to metal and just being raw and it's just yeah that's it has to sound well, like even that. i don't even know if you if you guys like this band or not but um the biggest thing of like a newer metal band that people have been kind of hating on lately is Meshuggah. People don't like that new Meshuggah album because it doesn't sound like the last two where it's so computerized and perfect and crisp and clean. The new, stuff, it? the new Meshuggah, it's all live off the floor. Completely what? all live off the floor. No more and triggers? It, nothing. No more triggers. It's real. What? It's right That's there. organic warm sound. Yeah, to an it. organic warm sound and a lot of like hardcore Meshuggah fans or people that liked, I guess, the last yeah, two of don't like this new one because it's not as crisp and robotic wow. and perfect. Ooh. And well, Meshuggah's maybe, like... Yeah, because Meshuggah, yeah, because Meshuggah sounds like a machine. Yes, right? mechanical. yeah. It's mechanical, right? Yeah, it totally yeah it's is. that mechanical it's sound. factory, all that kind of sound, right? But this newer album, they're like, well, we've already did that. Let's change it up. and Cool. Well, because their first stuff on Nuclear Blast, their, that first album was almost like thrashy, raw thrash. Yeah, but you could, you could tell what they were trying to do like how yeah. what they're doing now, like with the technical kind of stuff, like mm -hmm. that stop go stop go kind of yeah stuff. yeah gent gent. But I wouldn't. Okay, I'm not going to go far as saying it, calling it gent. No, but, I know. <laughs> but yeah, like apologizing for inventing that. Yes, yeah. I know. I saw I saw that on Blabbermouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they apologize for creating gent. <laughs> He Our said, bad. Well, you know what it was? Because he said, I guess the guitar player was trying to explain what they sound like, and he was explaining a riff, and he's like, chun, 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 chun. Just like Jen. <laughs> it's Jen. Someone totally said it was that. Yeah, early Meshuga, it was like, uh, it, was, it was not bad, but I can't listen to it now. I can't listen to their early stuff now yeah, because of the what early, they became, early. what they progressed into now, so much better. Well, what, what era but Meshuga do you like? From what era? Yeah. Well, I like it from... Uh, from around uh, what was that album? Destroy, erase, erase improve. 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 Yep. Yeah, yeah. F like from then on till now. Really? Yeah. That's what I like. Oh wow. I like it all. Me too. Yeah. I love Mashuga. Not a big Mashuga guy myself. I'm just saying. 
Yeah, no, it's different. It's totally, it's it's yep. totally different. Like you said, it's got that Fear Factory. So I can't really get into that band. Right. I like the really. first Fear Factory album, but after that, I was like, yeah. Ah. Yeah, but again, Mashuga, Mashuga came that, out before Fear Factory. I know, I know. <laughs> but that's what again. That back to our talk about like the real, you know, the real sound. And yeah. When yeah. when you, when you when you find that real sound, you your brain latches onto it. It's tough to listen to something that's really clean, like. When I was getting really hard into the demos, when I went, it would be tough to listen, like, say, a cattle decap record. Oh, something man. that's super tight, yeah. super yeah. clean. Oh, great, gosh. great metal. Love holy. it. Love it the is, riffs. It is good stuff. Really good stuff, but, but it's so tight. It, it's, it's, it's perfection. So perfect. And it's 100%. When you hear stuff like Ritual Torment, a demo from that, and you go to decap, it's nightly. It's hard. It's it, hard, man. It's tough. As, as much as I like that, you know, technical, brutal death metal and all that technical sounds. I listen to too much demo, and I it's hard for me to latch on to a lot of the, the yeah. really tight produced stuff, man. It's just because it's, I don't know. I, I just like the demo rawness. There's a different of, energy about it, though. It is. Yeah. Like, people in the demo, they're just playing. Yeah. You know? and, like, and like Joey said, you, you're... You it's can, a different underground vibe to it. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. what, that's what gives it its charm. You can close your eyes, and you can picture them just jamming right there, right, yeah. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Right? And you can hear it all, and them coughing sometimes in the background. Or, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? That's They're awesome. Talking. I love that. And then it's tough to listen to the produced stuff, but, uh, it's, but you know... It's not like saying it's, it's bad. No, it's, just, it's not bad it's at all. Just, it's tough to go from two complete different spectrums of sounds. Yeah, all big time. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, obviously we went and seen Hideous Divinity on Monday, and they're unique. They're on Unique Leader or whatever, mm-hmm. as Deeds of Flesh label or whatever. Um, they are produced, but there's something like devastating about it, though. Like it's tight as hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, yeah, it gives it a new type of brutality. There's something to it. Yeah, man. I don't know. Not man. as like a gross, men- sounding it's, brutalness, no. but more of a big, just bulldozer. Type yeah, of there's sound. some it's punishing a little bit- riffs on that man, but yeah. They are t- I... Yeah, we didn't talk about that show, eh? Yeah, I, I guess we were we were both there. Yeah. Cam and I were both there, and it was yeah. it was brutal. It was heavy. Yeah, it, was it, was, it was fast. I don't like a lot of the openers. I didn't see Occultic, so I can't say anything about that. But I'm not big on Vultures, like I was mentioning to you. It felt yeah. like it was like 2002 Metalcore days. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, it was it was a different. It wasn't even metal. I would say. Uh, no, it's no. It was heavy. It was heavy riffs. It's like every time at some I point. die with. A little bit of more heaviness. Too. Yeah, but every time I die, is at least more riffs, though. But. Yeah, I like every time I die. But that but. first band, they're from Thorold, Occultic. They were yep. pretty sweet. They're just like a newer up and coming band, like a lot of a lot of slams, a little bit of deathcore stuff. But it, the, the guy had like Frank Frank Mullen type of vocals oh, yeah? going well, on, really cool. low right ch- on. chugs. And, well, the drummer Aaron, he was the guitarist in Wretched Pain. Yes, at, that's for one right. Point. Yeah, so that was and pretty he's cool. He's a guitar teacher and stuff like that. He's freaking obviously he's playing drums. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, that was an in depth of hatred for yeah. Montreal, which uh, which with our death core with 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 blast beats. Yeah, I uh, wasn't I wasn't my thing again. No, man. yeah, I, like I mean, I I will never put bands down, but I was ah, okay. Mm-hmm. I've heard this before. <laughs> when the song is made up of too many breakdowns, like there's there's yeah. it's definitely a line. You, really, you got I know I, I like that's me though. I it like your riffs. Be, it can't be epic every riff. And then you just get bored. What's well, the right? point of a breakdown? There's no like, builds. Yeah, because no when the breakdown right? comes, it's huge. Or even just like again, hideous divinity, man. Like you know, blast beats, and they do their breaks and stops and stuff. But then there's points where it's like all of a sudden they go into this instrumental like solo, and you're like flying away, and it's epic, and it's amazing, and then it's just <laughs> right yeah. Into it again, but it, right? but yeah. if they would have done that atmospheric epic thing the whole song, yeah. it takes away from it. It's, then it's too been much, bored. and you get bored. Yeah, exactly. You got to have that variation. Totally. So that was a good show, man. I'm glad to see those guys. The uh, the show worked out. The tour is being awesome. They're getting great response. And we inter- again, we interviewed uh, the singer Enrico for the documentary. And, cool. And uh, talked about for the, the growl documentary yeah, that growl. Cam's yep. working on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's a a doctor and whatever you want to with the vocals and throat phonetician and all that kind or of something. Stuff. Yes. So obviously we had to throw the questions. It was just like you know. Some medical questions. We see, we see the videos of you putting the camera down your throat and doing s- your songs and watching how your larynx and, and your vocal cords and everything Whoa. react while you're growling, screaming, singing, all that kind of stuff. And he, it's down his nose. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you can just uh, there it is. It's just flapping open. So there he's talking about, you know, what happens when you're doing a boo and you're like, ah, yeah. and all that kind of well, stuff. Well, it, it was cool for me, too, because I actually, when I first started learning how to scream, I took a lot of Melissa Cross techniques and stuff like that and she would say like when you're doing it wrong they're kind of their vocal cords are smacking together and that's how you get you know 
bad vocal cords. Yep. So I was watching the video. I'm like, oh, look at that. They're not smacking together. They're, he's doing, doing it properly. Doing it properly. Yeah. Exactly. So there's, there's obviously bad ways of singing where you're going to kill yourself. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yep. But if you do it properly, then it works out. And it pres- you can preserve it. Yep. For sure. Exactly. Yeah. So it was a good show, man. I'm glad. The, yeah. Guys from Rome, too, man. Which yeah. Is, which is insane. Rome, Italia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I loved Very it. Cool. The fellow Italian metalhead. Right. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> So, Great stuff. Hey, uh, let's. Uh, we gotta get some Canadian going on, fellas. Oh, yes. Man. So, uh, oh, Metal Dan brought in some Razor. Yes, classic Razor after uh, debut album Executioner's song. The uh, the picture of all of them on the back of the CD is absolutely fantastic. It's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> they're decked it. out in leather, studded leather, that's man. How that's that, how that's, it is. That's old school metal for you. What year is that? That is, uh, this album came out in 1985. Actually, they released an album like a mini album. Uh, before this this album came out in '84, uh, they self released it. It was called "Armed and Dangerous," and right. oh, yeah. there were yep. some songs on that album that made it onto this album over here. This is their official debut album uh, that got released on Viper Records, Attic Records, okay, in Toronto. So, and uh, the track I'm uh, I want I want to hear is uh, called "Take This Torch." What number is that one? Number one. number one. Number yeah, one. we're starting with the opening track. All right, cool. so let's hear some. Uh, Razor, take this torch here on Hammer Smash Radio. Ooh, Dan, that's a good pick. You're listening to Hammer Smash, 103.7 FM, CFBU. Oh, boy. Metal Mike, why don't you uh, introduce the song that we just played? (laughs) 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 Song you just heard by Bathed in Blood. Called the Dildozer. <laughs> I love it. It's crazy. <laughs> and, well, explain what. Like you were just talking about. Yeah, it. Say, so, say why. So, what's why? <laughs> All right, so it, it's a weird turn of events, right? Because so I'm out there with the boys on the weekend, you know, having a couple refreshments, listening to Toto. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's this got to do with Dildozer? <laughs> I don't know. I was just, I was just, oh, I opened the fridge, I grabbed another drink, and I went. <laughs> and my boy's like, "What? Do you, what? Do you, what's so funny?" Yeah, because you're like, doing your voice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, D- Dildozer. That's a funny word. <laughs> and I just started cracking up, and he started cracking up, and then. Uh, so this was last week. Last no, night. No, last last night. night. He, he messaged me last night. <laughs> oh, he well, messaged you about dildozer? All yeah. I did, wow. I just sent the word dildozer to him in the Facebook <laughs> chat. <laughs> and then here we are, the local music coming out of Niagara Falls there. Bathed in blood off of their, what album? The Disfigured Dementia. Yeah. Yep. And right? <laughs> that came out 2006? Yes. Right? Yes. So, as you brought up the word dildozer... You happen to have the Bathe and Blood CD yep. in your hand, so we opened it up, and one of the pictures is Mr. Ryan Camposano, I believe, yeah. who is the artist who drew an actual dildozer <laughs> picture inside of this Bathe and Blood CD. So obviously, that's pretty mind blowing, considering is it's such an odd word to even think of. <laughs> the picture. And we gotta you... post that picture actually on, yeah, we'll post on the page. Seriously, yeah, we'll post that it's later. Phenomenal. And now we play the song Dildozer. Maybe that's your spirit animal. Oh yeah. Maybe it is. Hey. <laughs> spirit machine. <laughs> spirit. It's your spirit animal. The dildozer is Mike's Well, let me ask, animal. would you would you drive the dildozer, Metal Mike? <laughs> uh, the dildozer drives you. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. It does. It, does. <laughs> it drives you real hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh right. boy, good stuff! Hey, they were, we 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 had him in as guest too. Great stuff. They're yeah. called Dusk Walker now. Yes, yes. They were the offering. Yep. And then they changed their uh, they changed their name. You guys had him in here uh, in the offering uh, before yes, we you guys. Did. I think like they might have been your last guest, weren't they? Actually, yes, yeah, they was. were. Yeah, yeah. I think a week or two before we uh, we uh, did our last show here at yeah, CPU, man. we brought them on as a Yeah, yeah. They were the last band we had as guests. Very cool. And they were probably just released Codex at that time. Yes. Uh, yeah, just soon after. Yeah, just soon after. Um, and like we like we were explaining, um, what a great album that uh, they got those that released. Yep, the Codex. It really is. No, it's awesome. Good metal riffs, it structured very well. The solos just kick my production. Ass. Everything is all top notch quality. It is though. It's mm-hmm. like and like really I mentioned is. earlier, uh, while we were talking, while the music was going on. 
Yeah, like it's it sounds like something that that could be released on Metal Blade or Nuclear Blast or any and of these big labels. Big with yeah, that. like it's it's just top notch quality stuff here, and it's That's surprisingly like. good over here in Niagara region here locally. Yeah, yeah. man, it's awesome. Obviously, Slumber Dust, another fantastic oh, band from the oh, area. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course, and, and various. various. And various. Oh yeah, those guys. yeah, those guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hey. hey, you know what? The guitar player from Codex, or sorry, um, Dusk Walker, he uh, he's he's doing our album right now. Derek is currently. Right. You know what I want to say about him? I really like uh, recording with him because, like, when I do something, when I do a line, the vocals, or whatever, again, he doesn't just stroke me. He goes, no, nah, no, nah, come on, let's go. You can do better. Like a dad. Yeah. Oh. Just, yeah, he's like a dad, push, man. Push, push, push. You know, he's really like, and that's, what, it's, that's what you need. But it's different in a live environment, though. I, I, I went through, this, through the same thing, too, man. When I was starting to re- first record my first bands, you don't know what kind of power that you really need to put into recording. Because, I mean, you can just do that, and it's quiet, and it's loud, and you mm-hmm. don't have to right? But do it as if you're playing live. And, mm-hmm. that's, and, that, and, and that's what everybody keeps telling you to do. It's just like, no. Harder, Capture that energy. Louder, put faster, it in there. Yeah. Give, right? yeah. Make it sound good and crisp and yep. clean and totally. while still giving that energy at the same time, which is... which. I like so. If any recording yeah. engineers are listening, well, push them. Derek push knows, him. man. He's, yeah, he he's does. He's a pro, man. He's toured with some of the best. He tours with Fishbone and stuff like that as guitar tech and everything yeah. like that. Like, mm-hmm. like he gets around, man. So for someone to to be in your corner to be doing that too, because I mean, he worked with Vlad also with yep. uh, the last band, uh, Unscathed. Yep. And mm-hmm. all that stuff, right? So he's got a history with your guys also, and he's just a good dude. Yeah, great so, dude. Yeah. So and he's uh, in Green Jelly now. Yeah, there's yep, a show right. coming. So I, I believe at the warehouse is September, September something tenth. Oh, yes. I that's think it right. is. That's right. They just released a live double album, splatter vinyl kind of thing or whatever. So Sweet. that's pretty cool. Uh, if you're into big, if you're in Green Jelly, man, they've been around for 25 years or so. No now. longer, longer. longer eh? Oh yeah, they've been going forever, like since the 80s. It is, eh? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Old Buffalo band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might obviously do you remember them from the. No, oh, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, the puppet show. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. punk rock puppet show. Punk rock totally. puppet show. Yeah, yeah. So cool. Uh, what's going on now, guys? What are we doing here? Well, let's get some more of uh, some tunes on. Uh, we got the uh, we got the vinyl set up. Okay. You wanna, maybe we can get a vinyl tune because we we uh, last time you guys came in, you brought in a few vinyls. But we didn't. Uh, we brought all kinds get to of put that on. But yeah, yeah, now this time I brought in some vinyls. But there's never enough time to, to play anything because we talk too much. I know. Because there's too much to talk about. <laughs> there is. That's there the really problem, is though. too much to talk about. With right. so little time, yeah. And, and, then yes, and then to talk about the music that we play as well. So and much. And then to talk about the death metal documentary that I'm working on called The Growl. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, Everybody good. check out the YouTube. Uh, go on YouTube and check out the trailer for The Growl documentary. Oh, yeah. It is sick. It's not, it's not sugar-coated MTV. It's not, yeah. not, none of that crap, man. This is the real deal over here. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to... When this is all done, Thank complete. You, awesome. I, I really am too. I really everybody's am. stoked out. Yeah, growlmovie.com. We got the website going and everything like that. And yeah. actually, we're going to be posting shirts for sale soon so that we could start hopefully getting our monies together to start getting to these places to talk to everybody properly, right? Yeah. <laughs> the shirt that you always wear, that, uh, that, growl, that growl shirt. Growl shirt. So nice. Mark Riddick, the artist yep. on that one. Uh, we got that shirt going, but we have this other design, too, with this guy, Mark Allen, from the UK. He drew a poster for us, this crazy poster. I'm not going to tell you what it is. We'll just, you'll see the shirts on the Indiegogo soon. Sweet. But, man, we got some we got some cool merch ready for, you know, to hopefully help. Good us promo. Out. Hopefully yeah, helping I'm really, us out. I'm really looking forward. Well, now that we're on the topic of the growl, <clears throat> something that I really I wanted to ask you about it, because, like, me, when I was first getting into death metal, I was, I was always going on YouTube, like, looking up death metal documentaries and just so I can learn more about death yep. metal. What does the growl have that, like, is separates it from other type of metal and um, death metal documentaries? Well, because I think um, just myself... We're just old school, so we have this mentality of just being, you know, there from the beginning. And how was it from the beginning? And yeah, you have a better understanding, and because we were there, we did it. Yeah, we were in it's bands. not just some documentary person like, "What's this death metal all about?" It's right. someone and who then, was yeah. in the scene, right? And then just talking just to normal people, yeah, right. So we're actually hanging. We're going to start talking with the people that made the scene pretty much, right? I mean, you got your cannibals, obituaries, decides, all yep. that stuff, right? But they were so big that they were unfortunately losing touch with what the underground was doing, right? Because they're, you know, big tours, money, magazines, all yeah. this kind of stuff. They don't have to do anything. Like agents, more commercial. Everything, almost. right? Promos, uh, PR guys. Uh, mm. But the underground guys, like, you know, the tape traders, the zine guys, and just the fans themselves who were the big, you know... Uh, yeah, all the demo bands, too. Like, yeah, what was lurking 
deep in the underground, you know, like yeah. behind the scenes. And we have contact with all these guys because we were in contact with them back in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. So to contact all those guys and just be like, hey, man, we're making this documentary on death metal and we want to talk about the history up to now and, you know, how it is, you know, compared to then and blah, blah, blah. Buddy, let's do it, man. This is awesome. I got a huge collection. You got to check out my fanzines, my tape collection, all the records, the seven inches, all the letters that we got from all the bands back in the day and all this. Like, it's insane. So, the, the guys that are playing that metal, too, because they're, they're just fans, too, just like us. Like, exactly. Same, same thing. You they have were all to in be. the tape. They, you know, they, they found out about all the other death metal bands, too. The that's same how way they did you it. You guys did. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, that's, that's kind of why I think it's going to separate itself from, you know, people making little, uh, little mini doc docs on you know what we think the death metal band is about and the definition of yeah death but metal you know what though too now is the perfect timing like okay, sure you could have done it a few years ago but no right now is the is the perfect timing for it because you couldn't you can do this uh documentary earlier and stuff because there was still progression going on people were still coming so out happening. now like so much has happened in like over 30 years you know like huge death metal like, and like, just and just from the, the 80s it, till now it's yeah. like wow and right now, there's a kind of a mini resurgence with death metal, uh, bringing back like still that old school sound yeah. the way death metal should sound. Totally, right? we we talked about this last time you were on. All mm. these new bands that are coming out that have that, that sound. sound, skeletal remains, two mold from you've Toronto, two mold from yeah. Toronto. Guy, yeah. oh, that, that's making head waves right you, now. Yeah, yeah like, there, a lot yeah. of people are. Well, they, talking about Cis, that album, Cis, right over there, yep. yeah, or whatever, right? Like they all have that sound where that's what death metal sounds like, and mm -hmm. this new little you know scene that's going on right now with these labels, Everlasting Spew, they got uh, Rotten Cemetery Records, there's uh, Dark Descent Records, Dark Descent Records, Descent Records. Yeah, with, another um, great label there. Yeah, Head Split Records, putting out the tapes and all this oh, stuff. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. of Abysmal the, of Records. This, so yeah, much. like all, it's... Iron Bonehead. There's a really... Yes. Yes. Yeah, from Germany. There's a yeah. really cool scene happening in death metal right now. And oh, I think, Found Lore, of course. Yeah, oh, for sure, well, yep. Portal and everything. Yeah, totally. Vol right here. I got this record here, too. But anyways, yeah. So now is kind of the time because death metal seems to be like there's, there's a, a lot big of resurgence of it going on right now. And big resurgence, and all the old bands are really getting recognized now. Like finally, like you know, Incantation, they've been busting their ass yeah. for the last thirty years, <laughs> and kind of doing okay in the background, but not really. And now it's like, okay, like you're Incantation, let's go, like let's get bigger, let's get some big same shows. thing too with with uh, Exhumed and it's bands totally. like that for sure. They've put their time, man. That's yeah, and that's what it is. That's and, it, paying your dues. That's yeah, what it's man. all about. And then you got all these fans though too that are going back and looking at all these albums that they did. Like I'm, I man, I'm one of them too. I'm one of those guys went back and you know when I first heard um, onward to Gol Golgotha, you know, yeah. you know, and just finding out all this amazing, album. yeah, incantation, finding out all this amazing stuff that they that they've done in the past that I, you know, missed out on and stuff like oh, that. So. Hey, even I missed out on some stuff. Lots yeah. of stuff. And I'm, I'm just so like, much oh, of rediscovering some stuff. And I was like, right there from the beginning, yep. you know, back totally. in the day. But, but we, you know, but, sometimes there's there's just so much stuff, you know, you, right. you're you not going to get a chance to yeah. listen to er and hear everything, right? Of course, right. but... But whatever, you know, like, obviously, I'm a huge Morgoth fan now. I hated Morgoth back then because they were just a generic death metal band. Mm -hmm. that yeah, didn't that sound, sound like, like death. That sounded yeah, like death just and just the sound, Death right? part two. <laughs> but now it's kind of nice because, you know, that came out in 91, 92, or whatever like that, all yep. those years. And it's got that sound. It's just, you know it was made back then. Mm -hmm. It's cheap, it's budget, but it's... it's Death metal, though it's awesome. Mm -hmm. It really is Fresh. the same with with um, with horror movies. You know, the first horror movies. Like I've been going back and watching so many like horror movies from the seventies and the early eighties, and they, they just it doesn't compare. You, you, yeah. Like the newer horror movies, some of them are coming out. With I don't know nothing about these like newer that. movies, new especially horror movies. Like I can't, yeah. I can't watch yeah. that stuff, man. Like well, a when lot you of see, the stuff you see on Netflix and stuff yeah, like I budget. watched a movie on Netflix. I don't know what it was, but you know what turned me off? There's some guy blew his head off. And it would they CGI'd it. Like yeah. put a no. put a dummy in there, put some blood in it and blow that up. Doesn't yeah, work make anymore. it look low low budget or something, make you know. It look yeah, real. Like, just so you could get a little bit of laugh it, out of it or something. To me, <laughs> it's something. to me, man, you know what when I uh when you hear the demos and the early raw stuff, yeah. that's the early special effects. That's the evil dead of horror. Yeah, yeah know, exactly. That, that, yeah. The, the yeah. real stuff. They blew up this real thing to make a head explode. Yep. They, yeah. You know, when the in Day of the Dead, they were actually eating Whatever it was, guts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever guts. it was to Trophic make it look guts. like 
It was totally. you know they were eating a zombie. You know, and 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 during Day of the Dead, actually, when they were filming underground there in that movie, um, there was a, a weekend they went away. It was like a little vacation. It was like a three or four day weekend, and they kept all the pig guts and intestines and everything like that in in these fridges. One of the fridges, actually both of the fridges, they were unplugged on un, un, by accident. Whoa! So they came back four days later, and the stuff was rotting. But they still had to film it that day. Oh, so when wow. you watch at the end, when um, the guy gets ripped in half by the zombies, they pull one half out, and, and they, they rip his the... throat out and stuff like no, that. No, oh, wait, that's different, the, different, different scene. One. Yeah. So th- the end, where like literally, he's the biggest bad guy that you want dead, right? So he f- gets. I don't know, collapsed by zombies on the ground. They start ripping his guts, and then they pull his t- they pull his bottom half right out, and all the guts that are inside, they're the rotted ones. So when you watch it and you like check out all the zombies who actually eat or whatever they're trying to eat, they're all putting it to their cheeks because it's just it smells and it's gross, and they're not actually oh. eating it and stuff. Oh. So when you watch that part, yeah, man, it's wow. Really there's cool. some neat little horror movie yeah. trivia for you. Right That's me. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta check yeah. it. Gross. That's in day. I'll have to check that day one of out. The dead. Yeah, man. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, there's something about the old days compared to the new days. So getting to that point is there's a cool resurgence on the new days that are redoing the old days kind of thing. Yeah, I'm doing it right. Yeah, cool. same, even the same thing with horror. Like when you with the your, your last horror film, you did all the effects was real. Oh, human cattle. Yeah, yeah human man. cattle. Well, all because, that was real yeah, because you get a real feeling from it, right? It's just like like you said, we're jamming, we're all together. It's a real head. I'm actually touching a head, and all of a sudden, it's just like you know, cut, and then it's a f- fake head, and then it just blows up, kind mm-hmm. of thing, right? Yeah. Like that's cool because you actually see that. There's more. Yeah, you, there's yeah. something raw yeah, there's, there's, and there's real a, to a, it. There's a certain kind of quality to it for. You know, with those kind of effects, you know, like right. yeah, the computer effects. It's just like, uh, like I get it, seeing it. Yeah, I get it. I know. And same with being a technically produced metal. I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it doesn't always work. I don't know, man. You don't. You, so don't, you, you gotta don't have it. some budgetness to it. You gotta get some. That's what it comes to it. down to. Yeah, right primal. There. Yeah, it's totally. Perfect. It's too perfect. Watch, watch horror movies from like the fifties and the sixties, though, man. Too like we watch, we watch everything. Like we love all the eras, man. The thirties, the old Universal stuff. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I, I like the older stuff. The yeah. Hammer horror and the seven and the sixties and stuff like that. Like it's all real. Like Vincent like, Price, Boris Karloff, yeah, Boris yeah, Karloff stuff, all that, like, all all that awesome. old stuff, man. It's real but, yeah, makeup, especially right? yeah, especially fifties and sixties. Even Italian Mario Bava and stuff. Yes, like that. Mario Early Bava, show. awesome. Oh gosh, yeah, black awesome. lace is the black mask. I love that movie. Yes, such a dark atmosphere. Here that you black, can't great, get. Great movie. Black Sunday. You like Sunday, Barbara yeah. Steel there. Yeah, black one. Sabbath. Mask of Satan. Yeah. Black Sabbath, yeah. yeah. Seriously. Yeah, that's where, yeah, that's where Black Sabbath got their name. Yeah. 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 From that right. Mario Bava movie. From that Mario Bava movie, yeah. yeah. And then so many, so many death metal got stuff from uh, Fulci. Yep. All the Tons early, Fulci. that Fulci stuff. Tons of real. Fulci. Zombie 2. Well, so Necrophagia the, was, well, ne- a, was, yeah. was huge horror freaks too, right? So all their albums were Him and Phil Anselmo did that record where it was just all like basically Fulci worship. Yep. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Anselmo was hanging out with them for 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 a few years, and uh, the one video, Seasons of the Dead, I believe it's called. It's like a live video with video, like actual music videos, and just them talking about horror movies and stuff like that. And yeah. Phil Anselmo was in like half of it. I'm like friggin' cool, man. Like, yeah. Well, because he was doing Housecore Records at that time. Yep. When we were doing CF, uh, the original CFBU at the place, and we were getting, they were starting to do uh, Metal Maniacs ads and stuff like that. And Phil was releasing like Gore Lord and all that other yeah, stuff too. Yeah. Right? Now I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So he was like entrenched in death metal with his little label. Like when Superjoint Ritual was just yes. before they even started, it was his label. Yeah. Early 2000s there. Yeah. Yep. And he was just in. In death metal, like crazy, like he loves that stuff. He, yeah, he He's loves it. Totally into and it. And actually, to to think of it, uh, Phil Anselmo and the Illegals are coming to Rochester in October or November. Oh, cool! And Mike DeLeon is the guitarist in there, which is in a band from Texas called Flesh Hoarder, brutal death metal band. Cool. So I've been talking to him, and we're going to do an interview with him. So hopefully, Phil walks behind and. Uh-huh. We chat with Phil. Oh, so, yeah, that'd be cool. I'd love man. to hear his thoughts on death metal for sure. Sure, because sure. he was, even though he wasn't in the scene, he still was. Buddy, oh, by, by, so he, by he still had a still figure on the iconic pulp. figure in metal. So. Yeah, huge. Speaking of Phil, I love his new album with uh, black metal stuff. Scour, scour. Oh, it's crazy. Love it. Yeah, Mark Kloppel from uh, Misery Index is in yeah, there. Yeah, and the buddy uh, from Cattle to Cattle to Cap, and the guy from uh, Pig Destroyer. Yeah, you know why right. it's called? I don't know if this is why it's called Scour, but I looked up and apparently Scour is the poo. From livestock, specifically from cows and cat, or sorry, pig and cattle. 
and you got banned from pig destroyer and cattle decapitation. Ooh. So Ooh. Maybe, listen to that connection. Maybe there. that's what scour is. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I thought that was that's pretty cool. Yeah, I kinda just put yeah. that when I looked it up, but anyway. But yeah. So that's good. Yeah, so that's happening down the road too. And then I'm actually going to New York next weekend. There's the New York Death Fest at the St. Vitus bar with Guttural Secrete, uh, Cephalotripsy, Dehumanized, nice. um, all these brutal death metal and slam New York bands, all that yeah. stuff, right? Um, we're going to talk with Will from Eric Re- uh, from Mortician. Yes. Uh, he's got, he's right got, his, he's got a, his, his table set up, which he sells stuff, Red Rum Records. So he's going to step aside, and we're going to do an interview with him, and then I'm going up to meet Al, who is the original dude from Eric Records in New York. Mm-hmm. He's been around since the 80s, and we're going to sit down with him, too, while I'm in New York. Cool. So over the weekend, it's a two-day fest. We're leaving Saturday morning, and then it's film, 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 film. Nice. Oh, oh my gosh. But, yeah, I get to go to St. Vitus Bar, man, because there's Yeah, I know. So yeah, it's the shows. ultimate metal bar That's, in yeah, New York. I've yeah. seen so many videos on YouTube of just, like, bands. Yeah. My band, so favorite bands playing there. I'm going to be there, there for two days with freaking 15-plus brutal death slam bands. And that's a huge scene right there, too. It's the massive. Hard, New York hardcore, New York brutal death. The guys from Malignancy are going to be there. Oh, like, nice. just everybody's there. Actually, yeah, there's, there's a good death metal scene in New yeah. York, for sure, man. And the original singer, or the singer from Devourment Now, which was the original guy on the first album, Molesting Decapitated, he's in a new band called Kill Everything. Oh, so nice. So he's going to be there. So, His lows are brutal. It's so low. <laughs> it's just so low. It's like air. Yeah. It's great. So, yeah, man, that's, what, that's what's going on with the growl. That's uh, kind of the right update. On. You know, we just recently released the trailer again. Rabbit Dog Films, Phil and I. We want to thank everybody and and Dan too that we've got almost uh, fifteen thousand views on YouTube and Facebook. It's been shared like three hundred times almost. Like a, like I'm I'm blown away, man. People are really digging it. It's growing. It's it. Get ready, folks. Yeah, this is this is it, man. Well, this it. is going to be the documentary of documentaries, <laughs> for sure. Be. No, seriously. Well, it's it going to be I real. Am. Like I said, man, it's going to be real. It's going to be us. We're old yeah. school, man. We have that mentality is, of just you this. Know. This is something as a fan, I would like love to see. Right. Yo, and, and, the, the, and this, me too. Yeah, this is dude. And that trailer showed nothing. Just of what we've gotten so far. See if you my like that. Man. Oh yeah, get yeah. ready. Oh, my gosh, I, well, man. I like the style it's shot in too. It also does look very crisp and clean too sure. for a death metal. And we have album. a lot of obviously some some home video old school on there too. Yeah, with, mix that in there. Oh my gosh, everything's everything. gonna be yeah, it's, it's everything, a, man. Awesome. Old school, a lot of variations now. in the document. Well, well yep. uh, like we say here every week for when we talk about the growl, go on their Instagram, go on their Facebook, growlmovie.com. Everything. Check it all out because. You're posting every day. Yeah. every and I, That's where I find a lot of bands, too. Whenever I want to find a new death metal band, I just go on the growl and, oh, I haven't heard of these guys before. Because there's a lot of yeah. death metal bands out there. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> so many. <laughs> too many. There's too many. Actually. But then again, it's not enough. It's, I know, right? It's, it's not it's, enough. It's, it's, Give me more death metal so right now. There's, there's so much death metal. <laughs> and then sometimes you'll be like, oh, I don't know what to I listen to. I don't know to. what to listen to because I have too much stuff now. And that's like, I want to find something that's else. That's a big that problem when you have a collection, man. It's like, oh, man, what do I want to listen Oh, I got to go buy some new stuff. Yeah, I know, eh? <laughs> music junkie, yeah, love it, is, it love it all. It's amazing. But uh, let's get let's get to some music. We got some music. Right. Going on. We've been talking for a long. We got a we got a vinyl. Good, we do have a vinyl loaded up Uh-oh. though. How about we uh, get a couple of these? Uh, oh, you got to get some of those going those on over commercials. There, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. And then and then what music? Yeah. Oh, what do yeah. we got loaded up over here? Uh, well, there's this band called Vol V H O L um, off their album Deeper Than Sky on Profound Lore Records out of Kitchener. Buddy Chris Bruni there, mm-hmm. and I was turned on to this because I seen that one of the members or two of the members are in Yob, which is an amazing stoner psychedelic yep. doom band. Doom band, yeah. right? And they've been around. I think they're Catharsis or sorry. Uh, some, first album was uh, 2000, 2001. Somewhere around there, like yeah. That. And what? yeah, so this is their new band, Vol, which is, I find, like a good thrashy kind of space kind of. There's something about it, man. You're just you, gonna see, have to you said there's a little bit of a Voivod influence to it or check something? Check it out. Check All right, it out. I'll check right. it out. I'll we're going we're gonna to listen to it uh, after the break. Okay. Let's do it. Some All commercials. Right. <laughs> Hammer Smash, 103.7 FM, CFBU, bringing in some Cam's vinyls over there. Yeah, man, we got, you know, 
know, I just got, I just want to support uh, uh, our buddy Chris Bruni there at uh, Profound Lore Records, and he put this album out. So, and I totally dig it, man. I love the thrash, and like I said, I love Yob. I think they're freaking wonderful. No, I love uh, yeah, Yob is great, and they, like you said, they got that stoner slow style, and his voice oh. really works for thrash. It totally does, man. You and said it, there was a little bit of Voivod. Okay, there was a couple of slight uh-uh, Voivod parts here, but you know what? The vocals reminded me of uh, the singer for this band Hyrax. called Hyrax. Yeah, Anton. No, no, Caton. Uh, uh, Caton, that's right. Depenna, yeah. Yeah, man. Hyrax, that, yeah, it's the high pitch vocals there. That was pretty cool. neat. Yeah, man. Well, there you go. Like, Good stuff. Like listening to new stuff, yeah, that's huh? That's the first time hearing these no, guys. Like yeah, we're going to take it back to Canada now. I brought in this band, Joe. Good. I discovered this band. Um, apparently, they're bigger than I thought because I checked their Facebook. They got tons of followers. Oh, big time. And um, they're called Unleash the Archers. Yeah. And um, they're coming out of Vancouver on Napalm Records. And this, this woman's voice blows my mind. I, 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 I stand. And you're picky with your women. I am. I set a very high standard. <laughs> it's true, though. No, no, I get it, man. I, I mean, yeah, obviously nothing against any of them, but no. not many of them can pull it off properly. Well, yeah. and my thing is, too, is that women are blessed with a naturally better vocal cords for singing. Of course. That's a fact. And I find this, I don't know, maybe they're lazy or something because <laughs> bro I listen to I listen to Heart and it's like Heart I don't know right I, I just always compare women singers to like that standard of being I don't know being that good at singing and right then, uh, yeah it's tough man so. it is especially with death metal vocals too right I mean there's, oh, there's, yeah. there's a couple females that can really pull it off and mm-hmm. there's a couple that are like ah. let's go right here and Right. Abnormality. Oh, abnormality. Yeah, that's a brutal death metal band there. Uh, and yeah, that's guttural lows, lows. Yeah. And then, it. I, well, if you guys heard Blast of Mycosis, they had a female yes. singer on their last album or whatever. And it was, again, guttural lows, man. Cerebral wow. Boar, another one with mm-hmm. Brutals. Uh, Sharon from Dracada from Pittsburgh there, one of the originals. Um, and Jill f- from Funerous, mm-hmm. John McEntee's wife. She's got a great vocal. Um, but to. But she's singing and screaming and and doing some other stuff too. Yeah, it's, right? she and does. From what I've heard, it's mostly highs and like like almost power metal style vocals. But yeah. there's like weird like I wouldn't say black metal style vocals, but like raspier stuff. Totally in there, and it's really yeah. good. So we're gonna play a song because we because we've played them on the radio many times, man. Oh, like well, I said, they, man, they're they they're they have they're top notch actually. Yeah, I was really digging it, and they do a solid cover of Queen's Reich song, Queen of the Reich, and it's phenomenal, actually. She hits those, like, Jeff Tate vocals pretty mm-hmm. damn well. Which are pretty difficult, right? Yeah. <laughs> of course they are, yeah. <laughs> so, but the song we're going to play is The Matriarch, and uh, you're going to hear it now on Hammer Smash 103.7 FM. Oh, boy, yeah, that's right. You just heard Unleash the Archers on Hammer Smash 103.7 FM. The Great song band. Matriarch. Great Love band. It. Yeah. <laughs> What's the album called? What is that? That is uh, the album is called Apex. And when when did that one come out? Is that the newest one? Ah, uh, yeah, I believe so. I uh, I think it came out this year actually. Fantastic! Wow. Great yeah. tune. Yeah. Great tune. Epic, not cheesy. Yeah. You know what? Me and Mike talk about a lot is uh about the about the uh, epic style of doom and that um, power power metal. I guess doom. power metal yeah. is um, you know the thing about it. If you're gonna do that, it's got to be really really good. You know what I mean? Especially power metal. If you're going to do that style of vocals, that Dio, Rob Halford, or, or just that cheesy that, style. No, you, you can't metal. be half-assed. So yeah. you got to give it all. You yeah. have to. That's yeah, it. Because if you don't, Either it sounds cheesy. Go home. Yeah. Don't, don't yeah. sing. Yeah, it sounds cheese. Exactly. Yeah. But a lot of the times, man, not everybody can come up with quality riffs, though, man. A lot of people make cheesy riffs. Could be good vocalist, or it could be good riffs with bad vocals, right? So it, it's tough, like you said, man. Mm-hmm. That, that, that vocal style is... is it's difficult what makes a good riff for you guys i know what, i know you're gonna say something mike but i, I what so, makes a good riff just, well it's just got just the it. groove it come uh, always comes down to groove doesn't matter what style of metal what kind of what what style of music gotta have that groove good going riff, on hey eh? what's what do you what do, what do you that's a tough question i don't know man you, i just have to start naming bands off if anything yeah i gotta <laughs> well then it gets all subjective and all that right like Right. Well, it well, it, it, and it depends on on what your favorite genre of music is, right? I mean, within metal, right? Like, I mean, like I said, I'm a, I love death metal. So for me to compare, you know, what I think a, a, an amazing death metal riff is in, you know, an obituary song, you could be like, well, yeah, but uh, Fu Manchu on, you know, the action is go. It's got the groove. It's got that. You know, <laughs> that's you what it comes that, down right? to the groove. Like, yeah, man, there's something. Yeah. But, 
But man, I don't know. It's 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 a tough call. It's it's I guess it's whenever I get those goosebumps. Mm. Yeah, that's a good riff. Once it's, when, once that kicks in, and all of a sudden your hair starts standing up. Oh my God! There's that riff. There's that feeling, right? That's yeah. it. The hooks. Yeah, that that's it. That makes you right in. What makes you turn the radio up halfway through the song? You're like, whoa! Holy yeah. crap! I yeah. never realized that. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you slow the that's what music's all about. <laughs> yeah, man. Getting good feelings, right? Good vibes. As long as, as long as you feel it, that's the main thing. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Mike, I stole your question. I think you were going to say yeah. something. But I, like, I stepped right well, in there. I was just going back to the power metal thing. I was just oh, going to yeah, mention how, right. like, uh, it's, it's so easy to just rip off Iron Maiden. Of and, course. And, like, in so many power metal things I discover online, it's like, oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's Steve Harris again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> but yeah. sometimes, obviously, even though there's my favorite Iron Maiden's my favorite band of all time, oh, I love but, Iron but, but you know what, man? If there's a good Maiden ripoff, if yeah, if there's not right. too many. Yeah, there's not many. No, <laughs> like, seriously. If I want to listen to Iron Maiden, I'm going to listen to Iron Maiden. That's it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, it's because they have 700 albums, yeah. right? I mean, so you can never really get bored of Iron Maiden. No, really. you can't. You just discover more. <laughs> but then there's so many bands that sound like Sabbath. After you know what I mean? There's so well, yeah. That's the problem. But if you do that's it properly, most, yeah. If you do especially it especially in Stoner Rock and Doom and stuff, man, there's a lot of bad riffs. Oh, yeah, a lot, a lot of the same yeah, stuff we've heard over geez. and over. Okay, well, here, here it is. Here's a like Electric Wizard part kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. What I was saying to Mike earlier today was what I love Sleep so much is they use the same three notes, but none of their songs sound the same. They weird, eh? all do it so different. I think as they, you, as a doom band, you got to constantly think. I don't know. I'm not a it's doom not, band. You're in the, the notes. Band. It's not the notes. It's the space between the notes that changes. There you go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> yes. straight I, from a doom I get it. Player. I get it. Uh, Let's hold this note for 30 seconds, and then right. the next one. For 25 seconds. Oh, whoa. You just made a new riff. Minds are blown. <laughs> it's so true. Because if you're like, oh, if you slow down that riff, it, you know, it sounds like into the void or something yeah, like totally. that. Totally. But if you do it properly, then then it's okay. But, I mean, yeah. if, you know, if it sounds like you're really trying and it just doesn't come off natural and you can Grit feel it, right? Fleet. <laughs> Grit of oh, Fleet. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't mind them, but I, I, I don't care. I gave them, like, a solid chance. I listened to their entire first record. Oh, okay. Like, maybe, I didn't even do that. Maybe they're going to go for, like, the nerd Zeppelin songs, too, not just, like, the summertime pop ones. Yeah. No. It's all summertime pop ones? Yeah. But it's smart because all the chicks love them. Oh, well, because he's got a good – because he's got great voice. Mm-hmm. He does have a great he does, voice. He does. Man. He does have a great you voice. Cannot deny that he's got like that's nice. Some nice pipes there. Yeah. Right. He does. But it was. I felt the same with uh, when Wolf Mother came out. Right. Oh yeah. Uh, they were that had that retro rock sound and everything, and it was like you know, wow, this is kind of like it's a great tune that they had played on the radio. I went out and bought the CD, and it's like every tune's kind of that kind of tune, and it's like damn. You know, I yeah. get it, but all that potential, you just went nowhere with it. It went. It kind of went nowhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Same thing. But yeah. Anyways, great riffs are yeah goosebumps. Yeah. yeah. As long as, as long as you feel it. As long as I feel it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This band that we're gonna close with actually, like, you can feel it on their riffs. Oh, that's right. That's right, baby. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're uh yeah we're gonna end the show off tonight's show off with some classic death metal from Death. Oh yeah. Taking out their Scream Bloody Gore debut album from '87. Oh yeah! Hey, right. before and, before we get into death, yeah. what's everyone's favorite death record? Do you guys have a favorite? My uh, favorite would have to be it's it's a it's a tie between Scream Bloody Gore and their second release Leprosy. Leprosy. Yeah, I'm it's not in between. I'm not the biggest death fan. I mean, I I like them, but I'm not. I don't really own any. I don't own any death albums. I'll I'll, I'll be mm-hmm. honest. Um, but Leprosy is my favorite. I think the one I've listened to the most probably was uh, Spiritual. Spiritual, spiritual healing, healing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was a good one. It, it, that's it that's was, a, that was the beginning of those guys starting getting technical, mm-hmm. yeah. right? So, the one I've listened to the most is that one right there. Scream, Scream Bloody Gore. It's so I caveman love, primitive. It's, it it is, is in your face. And you know what I love? It has those uh, really reverberated vocals that just fill the room, and it's so big and loud. And and the riffs are he, so. Chunky. And when he screams, he's got a different type of scream he does on that album. Yeah. He doesn't do on any album. When he does, like, gore! Like, when he screams gore and scream bloody gore, it's like... I know. It sounds like he's getting stabbed to death. <laughs> yeah. Or like he's getting, exactly. That's a full effect. Yeah. Like it, he, he has that full scream bloody gore effect on that album. Like, I love That's probably my favorite. Yeah, I'd, right. I'd have to say this one, yeah. Scream bloody gore. Yeah. Me and All Dan right. are on the same yeah. page. Yeah, we're on the same level, there yo. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> 
Yeah, so we're going to end it with Zombie Ritual off the Scream Bloody Gore album from Death. Nice. Here on Hammer Smash. Yeah, so let's... Uh, awesome. We'll close, I guess we're... Are we going to close the show up this? Yeah, we're at that time. Oh, look at time. Yeah, look at that, silly, eh? Man. Time flying by. Time is flying by. So if you're still hanging out with us, you're still listening, go check out Ooh. our Facebook because we're going to post a bunch of pictures with these guys, all the CDs we had. And uh, I'm going to mention right now about the podcast because you probably noticed or probably haven't noticed, but uh, the podcast hasn't <laughs> been up in the last three weeks. But uh, I got my uh, I got my computer fixed. Nice. And so uh, what basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the best of the you know I guess the talk bits from the last three shows, kind of put them all into one curmudgeon casserole of a of a podcast. That's a cool just, word. Curmudgeon. curmudgeon. I like <laughs> that. Legend. This sounds like a cool death metal band. Oh, curmudgeon. curmudgeon. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll just throw that up there for your uh, you know to do whatever you want to with it, cool. and uh, then I'll Good. put this podcast up separately. As a, you know, it's own episode because we got the boys here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. Cool. Thanks for having us on. Pleasure, definitely. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thanks again. It's always nice to be back in our little comfy studio here. Well, we're gonna have you on again in a uh, a different comfy. They'll have a different comfort. Oh, you're talking about yes. it? Yeah, yeah. You said you weren't gonna talk. Well, about well, it. well. You said it was touchy. We'll leave it at. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> but we will definitely have you guys in again. Yes. All right, guys. Excellent. Thanks, man. Yeah. Always glad. Thank you, thank you again very much, guys. Really appreciate that. We're going to close off with a Metal Dan tune with, what do we got, Zombie Ritual? Yes. From death. All right. From death. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I'm Hammer Smash Joey. Metal Mike. I'm Metal Dan. Kill, kill. And as always, may the metal be with you. And also with you. Here's death on Hammer Smash 103.7 FM. <laughs>